coming up on Fresh Dew with Pastor Inkechi Ene. So when you hear the word of God, you get illumination in your mind. And you're like, wow, so for real, I'm accepted in the beloved? Wow, so for real, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? Wow, so for real, I was healed by the stripes of Jesus, regardless of what I see? And those images and those possibilities build a desire in you. That is the coming in of faith. Hello and welcome to Fresh Dew. I am Pastor Nkechi Ene and it's always my pleasure to welcome you to every single episode of Fresh Dew. This episode is particularly special because today we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, two episodes ago, we began a message series titled Ingredients for Making the Impossible Possible. Ingredients for Making the Impossible Possible possible and our text was from Luke chapter 1 from 26 to 38 and then 45 to 48 because that text gives a perfect example of an impossible situation being made possible that's where the angel appeared to the Virgin Mary and told her she would conceive of a child without knowing a man and it actually happened and that's how the Lord Jesus Christ was born into this earth so that's an impossible situation being made possible. And we're teaching that there are ingredients that we find in that story that show us how that impossible situation turned around to a possible one. And when we can put those ingredients together, we can also have impossible situations become possible in our lives. If we look at the other two episodes and watch them, we see the definitions of impossible, possible, ingredients, and many things we looked at there. The very first ingredient we looked at was that of favor the favor of God. The angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. You found favor with God. And the ingredient of favor, child of God, is very important for those impossible situations to turn around to possible ones in your life. Now, the next ingredient is that of faith, the ingredient of faith. And you know, the favor of God is available for us, like we, we have taught. But for you to respond to the favor of God, you need to have the ingredient of faith. That's another very critical ingredient. And Mary said in Luke 1 38, Behold the maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. That sounds like great faith to me and total submission to the word of God over an impossible situation. And it actually came to pass and became possible. So there are things we can learn about faith. That's what gave Mary the calm assurance to receive that favor that was spoken over her. Because sometimes the favor of God is spoken over us, 
promises are made over us, but we need to engage with the ingredient of faith. And that's why this ingredient is very important. It's just like when you're cooking a pot of soup. You don't use only one ingredient. You don't say, well, I've got pepper and I'll make soup with pepper and water. You've got to have the oil, the onions, the okra, if you're making okra soup, the protein, the meat, whatever it is. You put all those ingredients together and everyone is important for you to get that lovely pot of soup at the end of the day. So when we put these ingredients and many more, which we can't look at together, we see situations where the impossible situations in our lives become possible. Let's start by asking the question, how do we define faith? You know, if I'm going to teach on faith, I probably can take the whole year teaching on faith. So just in 20 minutes, we're going to look at these ingredients of faith in a summarized way. And the best definition you can get for faith is in the word of God itself. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11.1, 1, the amplified version, and you have to get yourself an amplified Bible if you don't have one. The amplified version is beautiful. It puts the definition this way. Now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see, and the conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Awesome. So faith is a substance. And that word substance is a Greek word, hypostatis, And it means a setting under, support, essence, assurance, confidence, substance. And evidence there is a Greek word, elegos. And it means proof, conviction, evidence. So faith is not a feeling or just something you mentally assent to. Faith is a firm belief in something that lines up with the word of God while that thing is unseen to the physical senses. Faith, therefore, stands as proof, evidence, before the real thing actually shows up. Now, you know, if I came to you and I gave you an envelope and said, this is a gift for you, and you opened that envelope and in it you saw some survey documents in your name, land documents in your name, a title deed of some property in your name. You would, you know, thank me profusely, I would hope for it. And then as I leave your office, you'd pick up your phone, call your wife or your husband and say, oh honey, guess what just happened? We just received 10 plots of land or we just received a duplex building. Have you seen the building? Have you seen the land physically? No, but you know it's yours because there's a title deed in your name and that stands as evidence before the person who gave you the property can take you to actually locate the property and physically you stand on the land you enter the building and you say behold this is my property but you've told the testimony and told everybody you received some property why you had a title deed that's what faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen and Jeroma puts it this way he says faith is our positive response to God's grace. Another example, another question. How then do we show how simple, but yet how powerful faith is? So faith is simple. You know, the people, the people who just teach, in fact, it is the church who has painted this picture of faith as being some difficult, mysterious thing you have to pray about and fast before you can have enough faith to, you know, to move a mountain. Nah, nah, faith is simple, but it's actually very powerful. So the church many times has messed up the whole concept of faith to the believer. Sometimes you even see people on TV talking about faith like they have no clue what they're talking about. Faith is actually very simple. How then did Jesus teach faith? How did he show us how simple, how simple, but yet how powerful faith was? Again, in the short time we have, you may have read Mark 11, 21, 24, 22 to 23, whatever, that whole section, you've read it. So I'll just take from there. And show you one or two things. And Peter from 21, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, Rabbi. Rabbi there means he was referring to Jesus as teacher. So he was acknowledging that Jesus knew more than he did. So I'm sure he wasn't quite expecting what happened next. Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you, literally saying you, this great man of God, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. So Jesus answered and said to him, have faith in God. For assuredly I say to you, only I, Jesus, 
can say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea. Because I'll never doubt in my heart. And I believe that those things I say will be done because I'm this great rabbi and this has nothing to do with you. It's too hard for you. Only I, Jesus, can do it. Is that what he said? No. Peter remembered that he saw Jesus speak and curse the fig tree. And the very next day he came back and truly the tree was withered away. And that was a magnificent lesson in faith. And not just was it a lesson in faith, Jesus made a very important statement. Now let me read verse 23 the way it really is written. He said, For assuredly I say to you, whoever, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things not, which he says, not which I say, it is not necessarily what God has said about you that will come to pass. It is what you say about what God has said about you that comes to pass. Glory be to God. What he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. So Jesus says, well, thank you for calling me, Rabbi. Now I've taught you here over to you. You know, whenever you see a whosoever or a whoever in the Bible, that immediately lets you know that's a key for you to know that you're talking about a very simple principle. When everybody can do it, even in, in, natural, in the natural realm, it's simple. Everybody cannot walk on the moon, but everybody can live by faith. Whosoever. John 3.16 shows us another whosoever. Whoso, anybody can get born again. Anybody can receive Christ. There is nobody who is so sinful, who your sins are so terrible that you escape the whosoever. So faith is very simple. It's very powerful. A fig tree was cursed just by the words of Jesus and he did not doubt in his heart. He believed and it came to pass. And that's what he was teaching his disciples. So we need to demystify faith and put yourself as the subject of Mark eleven twenty three. 23. So therefore, you should say to yourself, you know, for assuredly, Nkechi says to this mountain. And whatever Nkechi says to this mountain, once Nkechi says, be removed, he put your own name there, be removed and cast into the sea. And Nkechi does not doubt in her heart, but believes that those things Nkechi says will be done. Nkechi will have whatever she says. That is the ingredient of faith that turns impossible situations in Nkechi's life to possible. And the same for you as well. That is the whosoever child of God. Very simple. So anyone can make a choice to walk by faith. Anyone can make a choice to get saved. God will never ask you to do what he has not pre-equipped you already to do. He wouldn't do that. He wouldn't do that. He says in Hebrews 10, 38, that the just shall live by faith. So child of God, faith is a very simple and a very profound principle. And Jesus taught it that way. Next question. How does this faith come? Again, something a lot of us already know. But thank God for the refreshing of the word of God. Romans 10, 17. This is the ingredient that Mary had. This is the ingredient that Mary had. In addition to the one we've looked at already, the ingredient of favor. And some others we're going to see. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So simple. It comes by hearing the word. That's how faith comes. Faith doesn't come by prayer. Faith doesn't come by prayer. Faith doesn't come by prayer. Faith doesn't come by fasting. Faith doesn't come, you know, by wishing you had it. Faith comes by hearing the word of God and the word of God produces faith. How does that happen? When you hear the word of God, you actually, the word of God has something it does. It creates images of possibilities in your spirit. It creates images of possibilities in your spirit and then in your mind. Your mind begins to believe what your spirit has received already. And then what happens? Those possibilities and those images build a desire in you to actually make them tangible. You see that these things have been purchased for you by the blood of the Lamb and they have been deposited in your spirit. So when you hear the word of God, you get illumination in your mind. And you're like, wow, so for real, I'm accepted in the beloved? Wow, so for real, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? Wow, so for real, I was healed by the stripes of Jesus, regardless of what I see? And those images and those possibilities build a desire in you. That is the coming in of faith. 
when that desire comes and you now want to tangibly experience, you have the title deed, but you want to go see the land. You want to go see the building. You want to move in and enjoy the building that has been given to you. You don't want to walk around with a title deed and die a tenant saying, I've got property somewhere, but I don't know where it is. No, you want to take that title deed and go find the property. That desire comes. Each time you, you remember that this thing was given to you, you hear the word of God. You hear the word of God. That desire, that is child of God, the coming of faith. So you cannot expect to have the ingredient of faith without the presence of the undiluted word in your life. And that is what you see happening with a lot of believers running from pillar to post, trying to perform magic. You put yourself in a church where the word of God is not respected, the word of God is not taught, nothing happens there, but a lot of noise, and you go there and you expect to see the impossible become possible. It's not possible, except there's some magic or some other power or some other force going on behind the scenes. If it is of God, it is done by the word of God, and that word of God, when you hear it, will bring the coming in of faith into your life. Glory be to God. You see so many stories in the scriptures of people who received their miracles, who things happened to them because they had faith. But one of my favorites is the healing of the two blind men. Matthew 20, 30, it says, And behold, two blind men sitting on the road, when they heard, you see again, we're talking about how faith comes. It comes by hearing. They heard Jesus was passing by. Mark 10, 17. Mark 10, 47. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out. Same story, Luke 18, 36. And hearing a multitude passing by, he asked what it meant. And they told him it was Jesus of Nazareth. From the Woos translation, Mark 10, 47. And having heard that it was Jesus, the Jesus from Nazareth, he began to keep on crying and crying out and saying, Son of David, Jesus, have mercy upon me at once. So when he heard it was the Jesus, it means he had heard of that Jesus before. He had heard of him before. And you know, there was a whole multitude. The, all, the trans, all the different um, narrations talk about this multitude, but they were disciples also. That's what separates the multitude from the disciples. Faith. Those who have heard. There are multitudes who gather around and make a lot. Where you have a crowd of people doesn't necessarily mean you have faith there. There were multitudes. They were following, they were moving. But there was not, some of them had no faith. It's just like the woman with the issue of blood. Many people were thronging, the Bible says. The crowd was pressing on Jesus. But she came in. She had heard about Jesus. Faith had come, had built an image, drawn in a desire to have that thing which she had seen and heard about. And she pressed through the multitude who were there in the crowd, but she pressed in with her faith and she took what belonged to her. Child of God, the ingredient of faith is critical for you to enjoy the fullness of all that God has for you. And the last question, what did Mary then reveal about this ingredient of faith in making the impossible possible. First of all, let's look at Hebrews 6.18. It says that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, that we may have strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. That word impossible is the word adunatos and it means unable, could not do, impossible, impotent, not possible, weak, not to have strength, power or ability. It's impossible for God to lie. That word lie, pseudomai, means to utter an untruth or attempt to deceive by falsehood. It is impossible for God's word to be an untruth. It is impossible for God's undiluted word to attempt to deceive you. What God says is true. And you can do not even just a fact check. You can do a truth check on everything God says. That's the bottom line of what we're saying here. And Mary knew this. Because she said something similar. She said, for with God, Luke 137, nothing will be impossible. If it is impossible for God's word to be a lie, that is impossible for anything to be impossible with anyone who believes and has faith in God and in his word. I'll say it again. 
if it is impossible for God's word to be a lie, then it is impossible for anything to be impossible with anyone who believes and has faith in God and his word. So what was Mary really saying here? In the original Greek, it says, for with God, nothing shall be impossible, nothing. That's the original Greek. And two nothings there. The first nothing is a word that is an absolute negative. And the second nothing is a different word. It's a word that means every rema or every revealed or spoken word. So you see the word of God is coming in again in this issue of the impossible becoming possible. He says with God, nothing, absolutely negative, nothing shall be impossible, every rema. So what's that actually saying? Again, the Amplified Bible breaks it down. He says for with God, nothing is ever impossible. And look at the link. No word from God shall be without power <laughs> or impossible of fulfillment. No, in other words, no revealed or spoken rema, word of God, shall be without power or impossible of fulfillment. So all you've got to do is hear the word of God. I mean, if you've been watching Fresh G, for example, for years and years, something has changed within you. You've been hearing the word of God slowly, systematically, it's creating images, possibilities, building a desire in you for the fulfillment of those things which you have heard. And Mary knew that that was the angel of the Lord. It didn't make sense. And many times the word of God may not make sense. But she knew, she recognized it as the word of God. And she said, whoa, be it unto me according to that word. And that really, in effect, was how the conception took place. I give myself to you. I'm still a virgin, but let this power of the highest overshadow me. Because with God, it's absolutely impossible for any word, any rema of his to go without fulfillment. Child of God, you need to find that rema in your life. Go after the word of God. Hunger for the word of God. Don't spend your time on things that don't matter. Seek and yearn for the word of God. Those images, those possibilities, they'll be built up within you. And they'll give you the courage to confront mountains and confront otherwise impossible situations. And you just like Mary, you will be able to say, be it unto me according to your word. And it will be said of you that you are blessed because you believed and there will be a fulfillment of that which has been spoken over your life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for teaching us this ingredient of faith. We put it in the pot with the ingredient of favor and we continue to mix and the impossible is becoming possible in our lives in the name of Jesus. You have so many questions about your life and life in general. Why? When? How? What? Who? And the list goes on. Brother, Jesus is the answer to every question and he loves you just the way you are. He loves you too much to leave you this way. He's knocking on the door of your heart. Will you make a decision for a change today to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God? If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud, meaning it from the depth of your heart, according to Romans 10, 8 to 13, and you will be saved. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you are the Son of God and that you died for me and rose again just to save me. Come into my heart and make me brand new as you have promised. I will live for you all the days of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. We can help you grow in your new faith so that what has just happened on the inside will surely be reflected in your everyday life. Please call us 
at 0700 Fresh Dew or email us at saved at freshdew.tv and we'll be here for you. Romans 10, 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234-700-3737-4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Freshdew TV and also on Pastor Nketi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Freshdew and receive Pastor Nketi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website, www.freshdew.tv. Once again, thanks for being with us today, and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.